Picasso worth 20 billion ringgit launched. Government to issue badges as proof of vaccination. Welcome to News at 10, I'm Brenda LePaul. The government today launched a strategic program to empower the people and the economy, or known as Pumakasa, worth 20 billion ringgit as part of an effort to continuously support the recovery process. Prime Minister Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin said Pumakasa would focus on 20 strategic initiatives to boost economic growth, support business and continue targeted assistance to the people and sectors that are still affected. Pada masa ini, negara kita sedang berada pada tahap kelima strategi 6R Pelan Komprehensif Pemulihan Ekonomi iaitu Revitalize atau Memperkasa Ekonomi. Pada tahap ini, strategi pemulihan ekonomi ditumpukan kepada usaha untuk merancak dan melonjakkan semula aktiviti ekonomi Atau jump start the economy. As such, the Premier said the government had identified five main focuses of Pemakasa for this year, namely to curtail the spread of COVID-19, drive economic recovery, strengthen national competitiveness, ensure a regional and community inclusion agenda, and transform the economy. Among the initiatives laid out in Pemakasa is to increase the allocation for the immunization program to 5 billion ringgit, to accelerate the group immunization target to December 2021, and to allocate 1.2 billion ringgit to 2.4 million recipients from the B40 group who have lost their income to obtain assistance such as a one-off assistance of 500 ringgit. The government will also increase the maximum salary eligibility limit for disabled workers allowance to 1,500 ringgit per month. As to reduce the burden and support the recovery of the tourism sector, the Premier said the government will extend and provide various tax initiatives or rather incentives for the tourism sector. Now this include extending the tourism tax and the service tax exemption for accommodation provided by hotel operators until December this year. Melanjutkan galakan cukai kepada syarikat pengendali pelancongan sehingga tahun taksiran 2022 membenarkan penaguhan pembayaran ansuran cukai penabatan bulanan mulai 1 April hingga 31 Disember 2021 diberikan pada syarikat industri pelancongan dan industri terpilih seperti panggung wayang dan spa memberi pengecualian duti hiburan ke atas bayaran kemasukan ke tempat hiburan seperti taman tema persembahan pentas acara sukan dan pertandingan serta tayangan filem pawagam di semua, di semua wilayah persekutuan. Apart from this, the government has also agreed to channel a one-off special aid grant of 3,000 ringgit to more than 5,000 tourism agencies registered with the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture, MOTEC. A one-off cash assistance of 600 ringgit will also be provided to homestay operators registered with MOTEC. And as to improve the cash flows and reduce the business costs of hotel operators, theme parks, convention centres, shopping malls, local airline offices and tourism and adventure agencies, a special 10% discount on electricity bills will be extended by another three months until 30 June 2021. He said with the extension of the discount, the government is expected to bear costs of about 135 million ringgit. Prime Minister Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin has received his second dose of COVID-19 vaccine at the Putrajaya Health Clinic, becoming the first person in Malaysia to complete the dosage for immunization. The Prime Minister was administered the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine today, 21 days after he had received his first dose on 24 February to roll out the national COVID-19 immunization program. 
Tan Sri Muhyiddin arrived at the clinic at about 3 p.m. and scanned his My Sejahtera code before he was taken to the vaccination room for registration and to receive his vaccine shot. After receiving his second jab, Tan Sri Muhyiddin updated the My Sejahtera app to show that he had completed his COVID-19 vaccine dosage. The vaccination process was performed by Putrajaya District Health Office head nurse Dina Ibrahim and a nurse of the Precinct 9 Health Clinic, Mazira Mokhtar. Selepas lebih setengah jam kami menunggu, saya tidak ada rasa perkara-perkara yang luar biasa. Jadi saya yakin bahawa suntikan kedua ni akan menambah lagi apa nama antibodi dalam badan saya. Ini Tan Sri Syam beritahu untuk membolehkan kita menghadapi uh, kalau ada serangan uh, virus COVID-19. Apart from Tan Sri Muhyiddin, Health Director General Tan Sri Dr. Nur Hisham Abdullah also received his second vaccine jab today. A COVID-19 vaccination badge will be issued to those who have received their second vaccine dose. Health Minister Dr. Sri Dr. Adam Baba said the badge is in addition to the digital certificate they can download on the My Sejahtera app. The health minister said the name and my card number of the vaccinated individual will also be printed on the badge. Okay. Tak boleh diru lah. Dia ada kod-kod uh, yang selamatan, yang, selamatan lah, yang boleh kita jaga. Kerana dia melibatkan berjuta orang nanti akan gunakan badge ini eh, untuk uh, keperluan masa depan. Eh. As of yesterday, there were 346,508 individuals who have received their first vaccine dose or 69.3% of the targeted 500,000 individuals in the first phase. While 5.742 million people who have registered as vaccine recipients through My Sejahtera, which is 23.7% out of 24.3 million Malaysian residents aged 18 and above. The recipients of the Community Concentrate for Dispersion for Injection vaccine produced by Pfizer-BioNTech must take the second dose to significantly increase antibody production in order to efficiently gain long-term immunity against the virus. Health Director General Tan Sri Dr. Noor Hesham Abdullah said even the first dose efficacy may reach up until 89%. It has yet to be proven that it will maintain in the long run. In a statement today, Tan Sri Dr. Nur Hisham said, based on the observation in clinical research, the efficacy of the community vaccine will show from the 12th day after dispensing of the first dose. He also said the efficacy level will reach up to 89% between the 14th and 21st day, which is ideal time for the second dose to be dispensed. The Health Director General added that in the third phase of the clinical research involving two doses of the vaccine given to the recipients within the period of 21 days, the efficacy level of the community vaccine was found to have reached 94.6% in the preventing symptomatic SARS-CoV-2 infection. On to the latest COVID-19 situation in Malaysia. 1,290 new infections are recorded today by the Health Ministry, with 1,212 cases being local transmissions. Now, the figure has brought the total cases locked in Malaysia so far to 327,253. The Health Ministry also reported 1,346 individuals had made recoveries as of noon today, taking the country's cumulative discharge cases to 310,958, thus leaving 50,075 active cases where 154 patients are being treated in the intensive care unit ICU and 64 people required ventilator support. Two new deaths involving Sarawakians aged 75 and 58 were reported. Both of them have history of chronic diseases such as hypertension, diabetes, dyspilidemia and heart condition. Twelve new clusters were identified with eight linked to workplaces, two linked to communities and one each involving detention centres and an imported case. The Cabinet today has agreed to set the guidelines in determining the compound amount and discount rates under Act 342 and the regulations made effective today. Among the offer is a 50% or 25% discount on compounds settled within the simulated period. 
Minister in the Prime Minister's Department, Parliament and Law, Dato Sri Takyuddin Hassan said individuals or companies compounded under Act 342 would automatically be given 50% discount if the payment is made within seven days from the date it was issued. Dato Sri Takyuddin said if the compound is paid between the 8th to 14th day, the individual or company is eligible for a 25% discount. Jika sekiranya dia tak bayar kompon ini sehingga melepasi 14 hari, maka tidak ada pengurangan kepada emang kompon yang ditetapkan. Begitulah uh, mengikut jumlah kompon. Lah. Hmm. Kalau 10,000, bayar dalam masa seminggu, 5,000 saja. Kalau bayar dalam masa 14 hari atau lebih daripada seminggu, 14 hari, 25% saja. Kiralah berapa saja. Datuk Sri Takyudin said at the same time, the government would also give consideration for appeals on reduction of compound for those in the persons with disabilities, PWD, B40, student and chronically ill categories. Dato Sri Takyuddin also announced that the cabinet has earlier decided to stipulate the nature of offences under Act 342 into three categories. The severity of offences listed under the first category are offences resulting in high infection rates and significant impact to the community on a large scale. For the second category of offences, that resulting in high infection rates but less significant impact to the community and third category are offences resulting in low infection rates and zero impact to the community. Among the offences under the third category are failure to maintain physical distance between others, operating beyond the stipulated business hours, not wearing face masks and failing to register before entering a shop or common area. Seseorang individu yang melakukan kesalahan, pelanggaran, sama ada dia ni, uh, kalau ni pelanggan atau pekerja atau pembekal gagal memakai pelitup muka. Ini yang mau didengar oleh orang ramai. Di tempat awal. Section 25 yang telah dipindah melalui ordinan membenarkan kompaun maksimum RM10,000. Tapi kerajaan menetapkan kesalahan individu. Kali pertama adalah RM1,500. Begitu juga kesalahan uh, gagal mendaftar masuk premis. Misalnya restoran, kedai-kedai dan sebagainya. Dengan tidak menggunakan aplikasi MySejahtera atau buku pendaftaran, dia pilih salah satu, dianggap melakukan kesalahan dan boleh dikompaun RM1,500 daripada jumlah maksimumnya RM10,000. After being left inside car, kindergarten principal remanded. The Kuala Lumpur High Court has fixed 6 and 7 September to hear the government's application to block Petro Saudi International Limited, PSI, and its director, Tare Ubaid, from using over 340 million US dollars linked to one Malaysia development Berhad 1MDB, kept in a client's account at a United Kingdom's law firm. Judge Dato Ahmad Shahrir Mohammad Saleh fixed the dates in his chambers when the matter came up for case management today. The case which was previously presided by Judge Mohamed Nazlan Mohamed Ghazali was transferred before Justice Ahmad Shahrir as Mohamed Nazlan was transferred from the criminal court to the civil court on 1st March. Deputy Public Prosecutor Budiman Lufti Mohamed, when met after the management of the case today, said the government is in the midst of finding a settlement between all parties involved in this case. On 16 July last year, Justice Mohamed Nazlan granted the government's application for an interim order to block the parties from moving the monies linked to 1MDB and kept it in a client's account at the United Kingdom-based law firm to other entities. Besides the 340 million US dollars, the government in its application is also seeking unspecified money that was deposited under an intermediate account named Temple Fiduciary Services Limited at Barclays Bank in the UK. The application filed under Section 53 of the Anti-Money Laundering, Anti-Terrorism Financing and Proceeds of Unlawful Activities Act named Tarek PSI, PSOS VZ, Clyde & Co and Temple Fiduciary as the first to fifth respondents. 
An unemployed man pleaded not guilty in the Saramban Sessions Court today to a charge with improper use of the network facilities by uploading a video that tarnished the image of the police on Facebook last month. K. Haridas 40 made the plea before Judge Madiha Harullah. Haridas was charged with initiating the transmission of an offensive communication by uploading the video that tarnished the image of the police force on a Facebook, which used the account named Defend People's Rights Group with intention to annoy others. The offence was allegedly committed at 10.33am at a house in Taman Pasir Mas, Rantau, Negeri Sembilan, last 2nd February. Haridas, unrepresented, was allowed bail of 6,000 ringgit with one surety and the court set 19 April for mention. Meanwhile, in a magistrate court, Haridas pleaded not guilty to a charge with obstructing a public servant from discharging his duty. The offence was allegedly committed at his house in Taman Pasir Mas on 28 March 2018 when he was alleged to have obstructed the police from conducting a search at the premises. Magistrate Mahyun Yusuf set bail at 3,000 ringgit with one surety and fixed 31st of March for mention. A kindergarten principal has been remanded for three days starting today to facilitate further investigation over the death of a three-year and 11-month-old boy after being left for more than four hours inside a car in Sungai Petani Kedah. Kuala Buddha Police Chief ACP Azli Abu Shah said the boy was found unconscious in the proton wajah belonging to the kindergarten principal at 12.15pm yesterday. ACP Azli said the boy was picked up by the principal to go to the kindergarten at 7.45 a.m. and he sat on the back seat of the car. The principal only realised that the boy was left in the car at 12.15 p.m. after class teacher notified her about the boy's absence, which prompted her to rush to the parking lot and found him unconscious inside the car. ACP Azli said the boy was then rushed to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. The case is being investigated under Section 31, Subsection 1, Subsection A of the Children Act 2001. On a lighter note, members of the public are invited to participate in Tourism Malaysia's Chuti Chuti Malaysia Travel Wishlist 2021 contest. Now, the contest requires participants to submit interesting domestic tourist destinations accompanied by a short but creative write-up via the social media platform. The contest, organised by the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture, MOTAC, through Tourism Malaysia and Digital Tourism magazine Backpackers, is aimed at boosting the country's domestic tourism sector following a slump during the COVID-19 pandemic. Minister Concerned, Dr. Sri Nancy Sukri, said the plan is also to digitalise the tourism industry in line with the 2020 and 2030 national tourism policy. Itu saya menyeru kepada seluruh rakyat Malaysia untuk merebut peluang ini dengan menghantar penyertaan bagi menonjolkan keunikan serta keindahan tempat-tempat menarik di dalam negara yang hendak kita lawati apabila aktiviti merentas negeri kembali dibenarkan. Speaking when launching the contest virtually through the Zoom application today, Dr. Sri Nancy said the main prize of the contest, which is open to Malaysians aged 18 and above, is a travel grant worth 4,000 ringgit as well as an Apple iPhone 12 smartphone. The runner-up will take home 3,000 ringgit and a Sony PlayStation 5 video game console, while the third place winner will receive 1,500 ringgit and an Apple AirPods. Closing date for the contest is 2nd April. For more information on the contest, the public can visit Backpackers' website shown on your screen. And in sports, Pahang and Bo run in Super League. Stay with us. Sri Pahang finally ended their winless streak in the Super League by edging Sabah 2-1 at the Darul Magmo Stadium in Kuantan last night. 
After scoreless first half, the Elephants broke the deadlock through Ukrainian striker Yvan Bokashvili in the 55 minutes. Buoyed by the goal, the Homesters managed to double their lead when Lee Andrew Tuck scored his first goal of the season in the 70th minute. Sabah FC narrowed the deficit through a powerful header by Sadil Ramdani 10 minutes later. Sri Pahang, who are coached by Thomas Dooley, began their campaign with two straight defeats 3 0 to Slango, 1 0 to Pera FC, before sharing the spawns with Malacca United in a scholar's draw. The string of poor results saw Thomas Dooley, the American coach of the East Coast side, being rested and manager Dola Saleh appointed as caretaker coach. Former national coach Dola made an instant impact from the sidelines as he guided the team to a much-needed win. And at the city stadium, Pulau Pinang were held to a drab in their Super League outing yesterday. The Premier League champions failed to make use of their home ground advantage in their match against UITM FC. The home boys were held to a scoreless draw by basement club UITM FC at the Pulau Pinang City Stadium, even after numerous strong attempts by both sides during the match. In the Premier League, Trungano FC 2 also failed to capitalize on home ground advantage in the Battle of the East Coast Derby. They were held to a scholars draw by Clanton FC at the Sultan Ismail Nasiruddin Shah Stadium in Kuala Trungano. Over at the UITM Stadium in Shah Alam, PDRM FC finally came good of the three straight defeats when they gunned down the FAM NSC Project Squad 3-1. Muhammad Amirul Wai Yaakob start for the Cops with a back-to-back -back brace in the first half. He quickly struck in the first minute before doubling the lead in the 21st minute strike. Lazarus Kaimbi meanwhile netted the third from the spot in the 66 minutes. Azad Haros Arman scored a consolation goal for Yusri Chela's boys three minutes later. Early in the evening, Clanton United's dream of a third straight win was Dash playing on home ground. They were held to a scholar's draw by Johor Darul Tazim JDT 2 at the Sultan Muhammad IV Stadium. That's it from us this evening in our top story, government to issue badges as proof of vaccination. Join us for updates at noon at 12.30 tomorrow. Till then, I'm Brendan Paul. Take care and good night.